Over the Easter break, I saw the Mario movie. The kids were home from school, so it was nice to actually have a movie that I could take them to go see. Uh, by the time you see this review, I imagine everyone's probably been talking about it enough, so I figured, let's make it a little more interesting here and uh, give it a frame of reference. The best way to assess it would be to compare it to the Sonic movie. Well, there's two Sonic movies, so I'll just lump them together. We're gonna have a fun little showdown here. Two video game adaptations, Nintendo and Sega, the ultimate battle, the Mario movie versus the Sonic movies. Here we go. First thing, I really enjoyed both the Mario and Sonic movies. I really thought they were both past due and I'm real happy to see them all finally get made. They are different from each other. Of course, the Mario movie is all animated, while the Sonic movies are live action, but with animated characters. But they're both based on the biggest game mascots imaginable, both coming out of the 2020s. This feels like a new wave and very smart choices that are long overdue. It seems most video game movies have been something less kid-friendly, like Mortal Kombat, Resident Evil, and it seems like more often it's always based on the post-PlayStation era. So it's nice to see them making movies based on games that are all ages. I mean, why not? So both these movies cast a big net and appeal to kids and adults who have grown up on these games. Before I continue, I must say, the Mario movie has the advantage, being all animated, looking more like the games, uh, also, I've owned a Nintendo first, so for me personally, I can't help but lean towards Mario. I'm not going to give it a point for that. Um, not that there's any real point system here. It's just for fun. But just saying, I'm more of a Nintendo guy, so I'm aware of being biased. Also, the Mario movie has the upper hand of being so fresh right now. So I think I would give the first point to the kids' impression. So what did the kids think of it? Well... Once again, Mario kind of has the upper hand because we saw it in the theater. Now, I actually saw both Sonic movies in the theater, too. But, uh, the first Sonic movie came out uh, right before the world locked down. And then the second one was right after we started getting back to normal. Whatever the case, the kids only saw the Sonic movies at home on streaming. Um, it's hard to say. Kids change their opinions all the time and usually aren't as attentive but I can say they sat through the whole Mario movie without moving. Everybody was staring at the screen. Nobody got up to go to the bathroom, not once. Uh, they spilled popcorn, they spilled drinks, but that happens. They were focused on the movie and I think they thoroughly enjoyed it. They liked the Sonic movies too, but uh, this was a whole new level. The Mario movie was better catered toward them, so I'd give the Mario movie a point here. I must say, uh, the runtime helped, I'm sure. Uh, the Sonic movies were not long. Uh, the first Sonic was one hour, 38 minutes, and the second was two hours, two minutes. So maybe the second Sonic was pushing it a little, but the Mario movie wraps up everything in one hour, 32 minutes, which is impressive considering how much stuff they cram in. It feels like it never outstays its welcome. It just entertains, it's fast-paced, and after it's over, you feel like you got a two-hour movie. There's never a dull moment whatsoever. So I think I give it another point for pacing, even though the first Sonic was pretty well-paced too. Uh, but the second Sonic um, may have had too much padding. To compare the plots is a tricky subject. I think the main flaw with video game movies is that they overthink it. It's not rocket science. Just follow the game but it seems there's been a lot of hesitation there because, hey, that was a video game. The movies can't be like that, right? So they always got to change it up or add a whole new layer of story that never really belonged there. The first Mario movie in 93 invented this whole notion that the enemy characters are descended from dinosaurs and their version of the Mushroom Kingdom is this alternate dimension of Manhattan where everything's covered in fungus, which is actually the former king before Koopa uh, overthrown him. I mean, I still enjoy the 93 Mario movie. It's a totally different interpretation. The new one is obviously closer to the game. In fact, it's the closest adaptation I've ever seen in a video game movie. The Sonic movie borrows things and is still in line with the games, but they take the action into the real world where Sonic teams up with the Sheriff Tom, so it kind of becomes a buddy cop movie. Even though it invents a lot of stuff that's not in the game, I would say 
in the interest of being fair, as a movie, Sonic deserves a point here. It's a little more dramatic. It's concocted as a film that could work uh, regardless of what it's referencing. Now, when it comes to the world of the movies, well, the Sonic movie hardly shows us the world we know from the games. We see it in the beginning when Sonic is running through all those loops, but then it's like, hey, you saw it, now let's move on. I don't think anybody cared about the real world. Uh, we wanted the game. The Mario movie gets this right. Uh, we are fully immersed in the Mushroom Kingdom for the most part. Even in the beginning when it's Mario and Luigi in New York working as plumbers, it's still a fictional animated version of New York. And I think it was cool to see them as plumbers because that was always such a big part of their backstory from day one. But it's something we never really got to see much of. So it does a good job at setting up their world and then the adventures in the Mushroom Kingdom. It only took them 30 years. Uh, that first Mario movie, I still really liked the creative angle they took. I love the David L. Snyder production design, who was the art director on Blade Runner. But now we finally got something that looked just like the game. And it doesn't look like just one Mario game. They incorporate Mario Kart and even allude to Smash Brothers. Uh, I guess waiting 30 more years to make a Mario movie kind of worked in its favor because there's such a great wealth of material to reference. So, a big point for the new Mario movie. So when it comes to the main character, who was better, Mario or Sonic? Well, visually, they were both spot on. It's a very close competition here. Both retained all their character traits without getting into every nitty-gritty detail, I think they both fully represented how their characters should act. The voices were a little different than what I think most fans would expect. Um, ben Schwartz was great as Sonic, but I think we would have preferred Jaleel White. Chris Pratt was great as Mario, but I'm sure we would have preferred Charles Marnette. But they addressed Mario's voice change in a very creative way, and Charles Marnet still made it into the movie in the most appropriate way possible, and I didn't even know it was him until a friend told me. So I'm going to have to see it again and catch all the things I missed. I loved how they brought both Mario and Sonic to life for their new movie counterparts, but I think if I had to pick, and it's a tough decision, but I think I'll give the point to Sonic because... I was able to suspend my disbelief a little more and imagine him as a real being that you could actually touch. Uh, I guess because he was interacting with real scenery and with real human characters, he felt a little more tangible. The villain characters are another really great matchup because they both go with the old Saturday morning cartoon villains, uh, the ones who are evil and funny at the same time. Both are played by comedic actors, Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik, and Jack Black as Bowser. I'm a big fan of both actors to begin with. I really enjoyed seeing Jim Carrey going back to his over-the-top performances like in the 90s, but I didn't see him as Robotnik quite as much as I saw Jack Black as Bowser. His voice was perfect. It was evil and intimidating, but also very funny. I didn't expect him to sing. That blew my mind. I'm a big fan of Tenacious D, so when I saw that, it was like two of my favorite things coming together. A big point for the Mario movie. Now on to the supporting characters. We don't see Tails and Knuckles until Sonic 2, but they're both great and a lot of fun, especially Knuckles with his serious warrior persona. But the Sonic movies have a lot of human characters that have nothing to do with the games. Um, the married couple, Tom and Maddie, are like the main characters, as if there wasn't enough from the games to draw from. Especially in Sonic 2, there's so many scenes with human characters, you start to almost forget you're watching a Sonic movie. The Mario movie populates the entire world with so many game characters, I was thinking, whoa, slow down, this is too awesome. Donkey Kong has a big role, even though the idea of going with Seth Rogen is kind of cliche. Seth Rogen really is a great voice for Donkey Kong. Of course, I can't slip past Luigi. Always gotta love Charlie Day. Anya Taylor-Joy as Peach. Keegan-Michael Key as Toad. They're all top-notch. And it just never ends. It's like, spot the character. So, I think with the amount of characters from the games and how they all have great moments, it's another point for the Mario movie. 
when it comes to the humor, the Sonic movies have fart jokes and jokes about Limp Biscuit and Olive Garden. That's not to say I didn't laugh, and I think there's some really great moments too, like when Sonic makes himself a bucket list and starts trying to do everything really fast. But the Mario movies seem like the humor was more universal, like you don't need to get any reference or whatever. There's a part I remember where Mario jumps onto the cart with Donkey Kong and gives him like a celebratory punch on the shoulder, and then Donkey Kong makes a face like he's annoyed. But it's not one of those jokes where the music drops out and they draw attention to it. It's just a little moment, just a little thing that goes by. Um, they do have some of those jokes where they pause, but I think it's more well-balanced. I think it's funnier overall than Sonic and funnier for a wider range of audiences. So a point for Mario. At its heart, these are action movies. They're just dumb action movies. It's all about the spectacle and this is another hard choice. Both of these movies deliver. It's easy to get desensitized by action scenes. Explosions and stuff can get boring when you see it all the time. But both of these franchises have made it fun again. Mario just dazzled me. I felt like a kid watching when Donkey Kong punches Mario into the air and then it goes into slow motion and he grabs onto a block and gets a power up. It's the same kind of excitement you get when you're playing the game. And the Sonic movie had really great action too. Whenever he's dodging missiles and running fast, it's intoxicating. It's wonderful. Though sometimes Sonic is doing something you'd expect to see Keanu Reeves doing. Uh, this is a hard choice, but because the Sonic movie feels a bit more tangible, I'll give it the point for the action. Last thing, but one of the most important things for me personally, is the music. Huge point for Mario. Done. The Sonic movies failed here, quite frankly. My ears were itching to hear the Sonic music, any of the Sonic music. And yes, we heard Green Hill Zone as a little piano rendition in a scene with Tom and Maddie, and Sonic is upstairs chilling or whatever. Um, we should have heard it in an action scene. And then Sonic 2 has it as a ringtone on a character's phone in the middle of a wedding scene. I'm surprised they didn't even play the music during the end credits. That would have been perfect. Well, the Mario movies just run circles around it. Not only do you hear the Mario theme, you hear music from all different levels, not just in the score, but also one time Bowser plays one of the tunes on a piano, another time... He has a Koopa metal band playing in his castle. We also hear music references to the original Donkey Kong arcade and the Donkey Kong 64 rap. But what really blew my mind was the original Super Mario Brothers Super Show rap. I can't believe they got that in there. And they worked all this music in, in the most fitting ways possible. On top of that, it makes use of a lot of licensed music, much like the Sonic movies do with Queen and Pantera. Uh, same kind of thing in Mario. They use um, Beastie Boys and ACDC. When I heard that, I was like, yes, yes, no movie is complete without ACDC. Also, holding out for a hero. Wow. I guess I'll tell you why I got real excited when I heard that one is because I've recorded a cover of that and you will hear that sometime this year. Anyway, so the Mario movie did the popular thing, uses pre-existing music, but it also found room to reference everything mandatory from the games. More video game movies should learn from that. So I think those are all the main categories, um, the things I found most important. So that looks like Mario wins 7 to 3, but once again, I want to say I enjoyed both of these movie franchises, and I look forward to seeing more. It's funny to think that it took so long, but better late than never. I'm sure the modern advances in effects and technology has benefited these movies. It's kind of similar to how the Marvel and superhero franchise got really big in the late 2000s. I feel like we're at the beginning of a new wave now. The 2020s are going to be like the decade of video game movies, or specifically ones from the older generation. It's funny to tell the younger generations, back in my day, we had a Mario movie, but it wasn't anything like this. This is the Mario movie I've waited for practically my whole life and never thought it would happen. Do you ever have one of those moments where you think, you know what they should do? They should do this. 
They should make an animated Mario movie that appeals to all ages. It's such a win. Well, it finally happened. And it's exactly like how I hoped. It's the most faithful video game adaptation I've ever seen. And I hope this opens the doors to not only more Mario movies, but Zelda, Metroid. Yeah, let's go. Also, with the abundance of references and little Easter eggs that were in there, it seems like they're plotting this out as an expanded world. I don't know where it's all going, but I'm excited for it. And I'm excited for that new theme park, too. You can bet I'm planning to take the kids there this year. This is like the year of Mario. It's going to make so much money. Um, all along, for so many years, I thought the movie industry was afraid to adapt a video game and make it look just like the game because... That would be dumb. But sometimes doing the dumb thing is such a smart choice.